Um, I'm going to give a few, I think, tactical things in terms of how as well. Um, for me, it always comes down to maybe three key things. One, you want to be able to take more notes than anybody. Bob mentioned that in terms of taking down accomplishments or keeping a running list of tasks you, you've uh, been able to you know, complete throughout the year. Um, but for me, when I say take more notes than anybody, you really want to be able to, as, because I work in financial planning and analysis, it was, it was extremely important for us to know everything there was to know that could affect the, the price of the company, the price of our assets, um, where the market would land the next day. And the difference between my model being complete versus incomplete may be whether the manager had on a blue tie versus a red tie that day. And when I went to the, the follow-up meeting with the, with the manager, and I'd say, well, how'd you get 75 instead of 80? He'd say, well, you didn't see what Joe was wearing? <laughs> and I'd say something, like, and I'm giving that as a silly example, but he'd ask these things that I would never even think to, to know. Um, but he'd always remind me there's nothing trivial about what you do. Especially if you're in a corporate environment, you're doing salary work, that means that every single second of that day, all of those minutes, all the people that you're around, all the conversations, all of that stuff is, is valuable intel um, that will help you do your job. Whether it's today, tomorrow, or next month, you never know when you'll be able to come back and reference that information. Um, the second thing that I think is super important, get feedback. Do not just ask for growth mindset feedback, as they call it, right? What did I do wrong? How can I improve? Ask your peers, ask uh, people above you, below you, what do I do well? If, you, if you're a very humble person or introverted, it's important for you to know like what others see in you that they would love to invest in or that they would love to pour additional gasoline where you have a fire, right? You may not think of yourself as a master or even an expert at a certain skill set because at the level you are, it, it may come naturally. It could be a talent of yours. But until you realize or ask that question and quantify the amount of times you got called to do public speaking, for example, or to talk to an employee before they left. They want you, like they ask you specifically before they do an exit interview, or before important decisions. How many times are you called? Like you start realizing, okay, maybe I do have uh, communication skills. Maybe I do have a, a, an ability to think through complicated problems or to turn um, what was a directive from a manager into a system and project for a team. Ask people how they see your value and figure out where that overlaps with how you see yourself. Pour into those skills and then um, the third thing, which I think is most important, practice. Mm -hmm. Practice, practice, practice. It's just like owning your own startup. You, you are your own business. If you think about yourself as, as an individual entity, like we are individuals, of course, but like an entity. What's my, what are my costs? What are my revenue generating skills? What are the things that I do that's like my internal um, wellness and HR, like my wellness? Um, you always have to pitch the company. You're the executive of your own entity. So as you tell that story, you'll see, um, I'm a great um, talker of points. That doesn't land well. I'm a great <laughs> communicator. That lands a little bit better. I'm a storyteller. People's eyes light up when you say storyteller. That's something now that I add to my pitch as I go through negotiation to negotiation. And then you start that process over. Put it in a note, quantify how many times have I used that in the pitch, how many times did it work versus not work, when did it work versus not work, and you keep revising that cycle. That's how you identify value, communicate it, and then get better at that communicate. Like make it an ongoing cycle. Save those notes when you see it again. People think that that was. They like that. That landed in the presentation. Um, yeah, I think those are the things. Yeah, that's super valuable, and I love that we got so tactical because I know sometimes when we do these panels or fireside chats, it's extremely high level, and that's really what we aspire to make it as actionable as possible. I think I love that. Like, I personally love the idea of having like a win list or win book. Um, so totally plus one on Bob's point there. And Robert, just your point on just you know asking for feedback and practice and being able to brand yourself. I think it's gonna be really helpful for some of the freelancers in this room. So I guess I'll wrap up with two points here um, on negotiation. One is if you are employed, uh, don't wait until it's you know um, performance review time because you know when you're working in uh, smaller, medium, or large companies, 
maybe they may not even have a performance reviews ad, depending on how big your company is. Or if you do work in a big agency space, like Vana and I did, it comes around once a year. But make sure you actually sit down with your direct manager on an ongoing basis. Like, really enforce that um, and set one-on-one -on -one time on their calendars to kind of talk about you know, some of the things that you're currently doing because if you're not going to champion yourself, um, you know, your manager isn't really going to know what's going on beyond just the day-to-day -day stuff that they're probably copied on, right? So that's really where that win list or win folder comes in. And I know sometimes quantifying um, that topic is a little bit tougher, but to Bhavna's point, if you're able to say like, hey, you know, I, I came up with this new Excel query, right, just to get more tactical, um, and I know it helped uh, save X, t X amount of time for X team members that I've implemented. You know, that's still a cost associated, you, even if you can't put a value to it, because that means you now expanded your time to work on a set of different tasks that um, your manager is uh, wanting you to do. And then when it comes to freelancers and negotiating, you know, I myself am running a business, a lot of the times, you know, I'll make sure I'm not getting, you know, uh, taken advantage of. You know, the first thing I always ask, and I was just talking to Matt about this today, right, is what's your budget, right? Because you want, you're enlisting me to, you know, uh, do a couple of things for your business, small or large, it doesn't matter. But the first thing I always ask is, okay, what are the tasks involved? And what is your budget? Um, because then as a business owner, to your point of treating yourself like an entity, it allows me to then come up with the proper cost, whether it's an hourly rate or a project rate or a retainer rate that's beneficial for myself and the client I'm working with. So make sure you always ask that question because if they don't really have the right budget uh, for you, then maybe it's not a fit. Maybe you could al always refer it to another friend or whatnot. Um, but anyways, those are just kind of the tips that we want to wrap up with. Um, but yeah, going back to empowerment and advancement, which is kind of like part three of this. Um, I guess from your 